This is Arise America. Nationwide, workers at clinics that uh, sheltered abortion services are feeling fear and stress as they try to pick up the pieces and chart a path forward. At the West Virginia Center, the days following the historic court ruling brought on a different kind of grief for staff as their new reality set in. Some say this will linger long after the initial trauma of the decision. Like many clinics that perform abortions, the facility did not offer the procedure daily. Several days of the week are dedicated to routine gynecological care, cervical exams, cancer screenings, mostly for low-income patients and Medicaid with nowhere else to go. Meanwhile, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris says the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade was outrageous. She describes the ruling as the first time in U.S. history that a recognized constitutional right has been taken away from American women. Harris made the comment during a conversation with actress Kiki Palmer at the 28th Essence Festival of Culture in New Orleans. Well, for more on this story is now, let's cross over to U.S. where Arisa correspondent Eric Ham joins me live from Washington. Eric, thank you for joining me. Now, uh, we see endless protests over the Supreme Court's reversal on abortion rights. And this is one ruling that's left America even more divided as the ban goes into effect. How do you think uh, this decision is transforming America? Well, we don't quite know, in fact, how this decision is going to transform the country. Because right now, what we're seeing is not only at the federal level, our lawmakers, as well as the White House and government agencies attempting to try to figure out what the next steps will be and how they navigate this new ruling by the Supreme Court. But we're also seeing at the state and local level how this is also beginning to have unintended consequences uh, since that ruling just over a week ago. In fact, if you look at a number of states right now in the United States where uh, trigger laws have gone into effect where abortion is now no longer viable. What we are seeing are a number of instances, for example, uh, just recently, a young girl in Ohio, uh, age 10, was raped and was impregnated as a result of the rape. And because she could not actually get an abortion any longer in that state, she had to travel to the state of Indiana to get an abortion. Now, we do know that a number of governors have been asked specifically and pointedly this question. If a young girl like this young girl from Ohio, 10 years old, who was raped and was impregnated, would she be forced to carry that pregnancy to term as a 10 year old girl? And what we are being told is that in many states, the answer is yes. In fact, we heard today from the governor of South Dakota, Christy Noem, who has said that in her state right now, abortion is only legal and viable in, uh, the, in the event that the mother's life is at risk. At no other time should or will abortion actually be allowed. And what we're seeing now is how this is playing out and the ramifications of what this means in terms of the long-term viability for such a ruling, particularly as it relates to not just women or who are over, who are of age, who wish to have an abortion, but what it means for young underage girls who are pregnant through no fault of their own and the consequences that it has. But also too, when we're talking about a young girl as young as 10 years old, who was raped and impregnated, how is such some, as someone so young able to effectively actually care for and take care of a, a, a baby herself? And so these are just some of the consequences that are now coming to light that we are seeing play out. And also they are having certainly an impact on what the ruling uh, by the Supreme Court means for the rest of the nation. Indeed, it's a very sad development. But uh, while Americans are grappling with this uh, changed reality, this ruling seems to be having more wider implications. Tell us how this is affecting uh, particularly the health care in the U.S. Yeah, that's also a really good question, because one of the issues that we know, uh, particularly given uh, the, what you just showed there, uh, in the United States, Planned Parenthood or women's reproductive care, such as cervical, uh, cervical screening, breast, uh, breast cancer screenings, those are massive issues. And that's something that has an, 
a, a tremendous impact, particularly on communities of color and low, low income communities. And as we have seen across the nation, as now abortion has been ruled unconstitutional at the federal level, and already to date more than 13 states have outlawed abortion, what we are now beginning to see are many of these clinics across the nation, particularly in rural areas, have now begun to shutter uh, th their services because of these new rulings and because of the fear that they now feel if in fact they continue to provide health care to women and are seen as perhaps uh, uh, providing illegal abortions. And so this is a growing concern. And we're seeing now because of these many uh, clinics that are closing down, uh, we are seeing that many women, particularly low income women who are who are who pro, who, who, pro, who get care from these types of clinics are now finding themselves with nowhere to go for uh, basic screening, such as breast cancer, cervical uh, cancer screening, and other types of reproductive care. And so uh, what we're seeing here are unintended consequences, and it's shaping not only how the nation is attempting to try to address this issue from a political standpoint, from a policy standpoint, but more importantly, from a health care perspective as well. Well, uh, clearly this ban is going to be on the front burner at the midterm elections. How much pressure is President Joe Biden and, of course, the Democrats to act? And uh, how is the White House driving their campaign at this point? Well, right now, what, what our sources are telling us is that there is growing frustration within the Democratic Party with the White House. We are told from our sources that that they believe that the White House had ample time to actually put together a plan and a strategy to combat this ruling by the Supreme Court. Remember, even before we got this ruling just over a week ago, we had known for, for weeks, for several weeks, in fact, uh, based on that leaked draft ruling that the Supreme Court was, in fact, going to overturn Roe versus, versus Wade, making uh, abortion unconstitutional at the federal level. And people felt that there was ample time for the White House to begin to mobilize, to begin to implement and formulate a strategy. And many believe that right now the White House has not been able to do that. And then, of course, there's growing alarms about whether or not President Biden can actually lead on this issue because, not, because there is growing concern that President Biden is seen as an institutionalist who may be unwilling to actually make the decisions or actually push for the change that many believe is necessary to combat uh, this new ruling by the Supreme Court. Now, just recently, uh, prior to the president uh, leaving the NATO summit, he did announce that he believes that the Senate should actually eliminate the filibuster rule to allow uh, this uh, for, for, for a vote to take place to codify Roe v. Wade but many felt that that came too late. And so what we're seeing here is even though there is growing, uh, growing support for, uh, for, for turnout in the upcoming midterm elections, and now many believe that this is an issue that will galvanize Democratic voters, there's still growing alarm that right now there isn't a massive push uh, from the White House on down to be able to combat this issue. We do know that just uh, recently we heard from the vice president, Kamala Harris, who spoke at a major event uh, that featured an enormous group of uh, women of color, where she talked about how she felt that the Supreme Court made the wrong decision and that the Biden administration will uh, will focus on this issue. And, it, and she certainly uh, her, her comments were received very warmly and 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 and, and she she received enormous praise for that. But still, that's just one very small component of a large group of Democratic voters, particularly the base, who feel like right now they're not seeing enough from the Biden administration. Well, uh, Eric, um, I, I, know that, I know that, I mean, I've heard all the, that you said, but of course there's this argument that Congress does not really have the power to overturn a decision that has been taken by the Supreme Court. But that aside, now, uh, now that we're talking about elections, what impact do you think that the reversal of abortion rights will have on the midterm elections, particularly with low approval ratings on the Biden administration? Well, actually, right now, if, if, if you're asking me, uh, you know, what this means, are we going to see Democrats lose control of the House and Senate in the midterm elections? 
uh, only time will tell based on what our polling data is actually showing uh, since the since this ruling by the Supreme Court. What we are now seeing actually is that Democrats look like they have an advantage actually heading into the midterm elections at plus 27 means that uh, right now they're actually ahead uh, in a generic polling in terms of do you want Democrats or Republicans in control of Congress right now? It looks as though it's swinging to the Democrats way. But again, we're talking about an election that's months away and 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 and, and politics in the United States. That's literally a lifetime. So that number could certainly change. But in addition to that, what we are seeing are, are, are not only uh, with this ruling by the Supreme Court, but with other controversial rulings, particularly around guns and climate change, what we are seeing is that there is growing concern about what this ruling could mean. And you're seeing Democratic voters become far more galvanized. And also, I'll just add, we, uh, while the Supreme Court is not in session right now, their, their summer session has ended, uh, we do know when they come back for their fall session, they're going to be taking up additional controversial issues that will certainly uh, draw the ire of Democratic voters, meaning they could actually uh, become even more energized to go to the poll. And some issues that are on the docket heading into the fall include affirmative action as well as voting rights, two issues that will certainly be issues that base Democratic voters will be focusing on. Indeed, these are issues that one would really want to look forward to. Thank you very much, Eric, as always, for your insights. This is Arise America.